The following educational material was produced by Dr. John T. Killian and Dr. Sharon Mayberry, along with Sally Scoliosis, Kyle Kyphosis, and Spondylolisthesis Sam. The decision to treat your child's spinal deformity with an operation is an important step that you take along with your orthopedic surgeons. Several factors will influence that decision, including the type of deformity, age of the patient, rate of worsening of the deformity, and general health of the child. The three types of spinal deformity that may require surgical treatments are scoliosis, kyphosis, and spondylolisthesis. Scoliosis is a sideways curvature of the spine. This curvature, and the rotation that goes with it, produces rib prominence, waistline asymmetry, and unevenness of shoulder and wing blades. Based on the cause, scoliosis may be further divided into congenital, neuromuscular, tumors, and idiopathic types. Congenital scoliosis is present if the spinal bones are misshapen at birth. The term congenital implies that the bones failed to form properly in the first six to eight weeks of gestation. The bones may be completely or partially separated and incompletely formed. Certain types of congenital scoliosis are more likely to worsen with growth of the child. Combinations of these types of deformities can result in more severe curves. A child may have a slight degree of curvature at birth. However, a combination of misshapen and partially glued together spinal bones can produce a 90 degree scoliosis within the first year of life. Conditions, which cause abnormal nerve and muscular function, may contribute to the development and progression of scoliosis. The neuromuscular curve in these children usually extends from the neck to the pelvis. Common abnormalities of the nervous system that produce scoliosis include Chiari malformation, which is a narrowed opening at the base of the skull pinching the brain. Syrinx, or syringomyelia, is an abnormal collection of fluid within the spinal cord. Rett syndrome, with its MECP2 gene abnormality, cerebral palsy, with its injury to the brain, and spina bifida. Abnormal muscular conditions may also produce large, stiff, scoliotic curves. These include congenital myopathy, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and spinal muscular atrophy. Tumors may lead to the formation of a spinal deformity through destruction of the bone or abnormal growth. Eosinophilic granuloma and aneurysmal bone tumors weaken the spine, which then leads to collapse and spine deformity. Dural ectasia is an abnormal enlargement of the spinal cord, that leads to abnormal growth of the spine and deformity. Neurofibromatosis is a genetic disorder that leads to abnormal enlargement of the nerves of the spine. The mass of nerves may become so large that it deforms the spine and produces scoliosis. The most common form of scoliosis is called idiopathic scoliosis. This type of scoliosis is not present at birth and normally appears in early adolescence. The nervous system, muscles, and spinal bones all appear to be normal in idiopathic scoliosis. However, the spine bends and twists as it grows, probably due to an abnormal genetic message. Once the bending starts, it continues until skeletal maturity is reached. This group of patients represents the largest group of surgical patients. Kyphosis is an exaggerated forward bending of the spine during growth. This deformity may occur throughout the entire spinal column. When the kyphotic deformity results from an abnormal bone formation, it is called congenital kyphosis. A developmental kyphosis, known as Sherman's kyphosis, occurs in adolescence when the spinal growth plates do not grow properly. This gives the spine an exaggerated rounded appearance. In children with abnormal muscle tone, due to conditions such as cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy, a severe type of kyphosis of the spine develops. This leads to poor sitting balance and difficulty with feeding and wheelchair positioning. This is called neuromuscular hyperkyphosis.
The vertebral bodies are aligned in the front of the spine by discs. In the back, the bones are kept aligned by hinges called facet joints. The facet joints allow the spine to bend and twist, but not slip out of alignment. Spondylolisthesis is the abnormal forward slippage of a vertebra on the one below it. Abnormal conditions that contribute to the development of spondylolisthesis include congenital absence of the facet, misshapen facet joints, and fracture of the bone between the facets, which is called the pars interarticularis. The recommendation to the family to consider a surgical treatment for their spinal deformity may be based on progression of the curve over time as seen on x-ray, worsening of the imbalance, loss of waist symmetry, elevation of the shoulder or increasing truncal shift where the shoulders are no longer centered over the hips. All four curves demonstrated by Sally scoliosis would measure the same by x-ray. However, some of them are more notable.